Hello, this is Bill Golis from Coda Bears. Today we'll be covering PO entry. To access purchase order entry from the main menu, we're going to be in material management, purchase management, general operations, and then purchase order entry. Uh, first off, we need to create a new PO from the file menu or from the little sheet of paper here. We'll select new PO. Next, we have to uh, pick a supplier that's going to supply this good or service to us. We're going to go with A to Z metals. For this first PO, we're going to just buy an item for inventory. We've now created the summary and the header. Uh, we'll verify that we have a PO date that's today. We're going to uh, put the delivery in a week. And if we put a promise date in, that would be identifying when the, uh, the item was promised to us from our vendor. It's not necessary. Our terms look good. We have a ship via and a free on board. So now we're going to create a line for this item. Uh, we can go to the line tab and just select a sheet of paper. And now we're creating a new line. First thing you need to do is decide what you're going to buy for. Uh, there are four options, inventory, other, which is miscellaneous, job, or subcontract. Our first one, we're going to go to inventory, which is the default, and we're going to select what part that we want to buy. We're going to select a purchase part here, and we want to pick up something like, oh, I don't know, some machine screws here. We have to identify how many we want. Now we see our description pops in. There's not a manufacturer or uh, a manufacturer part or supplier part number. Not necessary. Our due date shows as 710, which we had put on to the, the, uh, the header page. We're going to get a thousand of these screws. And for our price, we are paying five cents per for these screws. That'll be a $50 uh, extended cost. And then we're going to select save. That's all we need to do for this PO. That will create a single release here for the thousand pieces and do it on the proper date. If we wanted to get these in, say, two releases, we could create another release here, a uh, new release, and we're going to put that one for 500. And then we're going to have one release for 500, and we'll put that one out a week later. And now when we save this, we have two releases, 500 here, and we need to edit this one to be 500, because now we're over. And now we have our 1,000 pieces, 500 coming in on 710, and 500 coming in on 717. Our line should still be at 1,000 pieces, correct. That is a PO for uh, for inventory. And then the last thing you have to do prior to being able to print or uh, use this PO is you have to approve it. So on the summary tab, there is a approval t selection. We're going to select that, and then we'll save. And that one's ready to go. All right, next off, we're going to create a purchase order uh, for a miscellaneous item. And go with a new purchase order. Again, we're going to choose the same supplier again, A to Z Metals. And we're going to check our header information. Today's date, we have to select a due date. Again, we'll put it out a week. And we're going to save that. That will generate a purchase order number. Our terms, Shibvia and FOB were all on that supplier, so they come in. We could change these on the fly if we decided, hey, this one was going to be from the origin, and they decided to give us some a better terms here. Uh, we, have, we don't have better terms, so we're going to say they gave us worse terms. We'll go with COD. Now we're going to create a new line, and this, again, we're going to uh, do this as a miscellaneous PO that's going to be marked as other. For other, we can uh, do just a part on the fly, put any description that we want. It does not need to be in the part master. I'm going to say, I'm going to call this our lunch part. Okay. 
Okay. And all we need is a rep or is a, a part and a description. We can now put a quantity in. We're going to say we want 50 of these. And these are going to be a dollar each for these bunch parts. And save it. And that's all we need to do for a uh, for a miscellaneous PO, just uh, freehand in a part and a description. So if you were buying something that's going to be a one-off or that you don't want to store in your part master and there's not going to be inventory, this way you can purchase and pay for it on a standard Epicor PO. Again, we're going to need to approve this before it's ready to go. Uh, notice when we go to our actions, the uh, print is grayed out. If we approve it, then we should see that the print is now available. You can't print if it's not approved. We'll take a quick look at how this prints out with our standard SSRS report. And the other two types of POs are purchasing to a job or to subcontract. Uh, here is our, our PO uh, for a miscellaneous. It just shows the part and the description. Uh, the quantity price extended and then the single release here uh, for 7, 10, and 50 pieces. Uh, we did, that did default to taxable. Uh, I will show you on the next run. If you're not buying, if you are buying for resale or, you know, to a job uh, or for resale, you would not want to be taxable on, the, on this purchase, of course. Okay, now we're going to do a purchase order to a job and buy materials for a job. So we're going to go with a new PO. We're going to choose a different supplier here because we're buying steel for a job and I know this particular supplier is on the records to be the preferred supplier for these items. Okay. We're going to verify our header information. There's no FOB in here. We need to put a due date in. We're going to go out to next week for the 8th. And we're going to put a FOB of a origin here. And then we're going to save that. And we're going to create a new line. Now this time, notice that the job is grayed out. When we select a job material here on the radio button, the job field becomes active. The job we're going to buy for is 2420. And we'll see if there's only one assembly. And let's see what materials are available. Okay, there's steel and a component. Let's go to the steel first. See how it pops in with your um, with your part your description. It also brings in the quantity and the um, the information based on what is on the uh, job record. And we're going to say that's correct, but we found out we got a deal from the supplier. We got it for 120 a pound, so we get a little bit of savings there. And we're going to save that. That will create a single release for that to come in, which is what we want. And now we have bought the job 2420, material 10. Let's go ahead and buy the other material that, that we need from the same supplier. Uh, they can supply both of these items here. So we're going to create another line. Again, with job material, we're going to go with 2420, and our material is going to be 20 now. And that comes in as 50, but there was no price on that particular item. So we are going to say we're getting these for $2.30 a piece. And we have our part, our description, our quantity, and our price. Uh, see how these didn't come in as taxable because they are marked on a job. Let's verify these are both non-taxable. Excellent. And then we're going to save our PO. We've got two lines. And we're going to approve it. And we're going to take a look at this uh, print as well to see what this looks like with the multiple lines. And that's bought for the job. Uh, the PO will indicate on there what the what the job and material is, uh, which is nice when it, it gets received in. We can see here, here's our, two uh, here's our vendor, here's our two lines, our, our order date and our, uh, our terms. And here's our due dates for each line, 7-3. Okay, here's our first line. It shows our 2,500 pounds at $1.20 for 3,000 bucks. 
and then it's for job 2420, uh, assembly 0, uh, and sequence 10. And here's our second component, 50 at 230 each. Again, showing your job number and your, uh, and your sequence. Uh, and the job being a manufacturing or service, this is, of course, manufacturing. And there's our total at the bottom. All right. So we've bought for inventory. We've bought for miscellaneous and now to a job. Okay. Now we're going to do a purchase order for a subcontract operation on, on a job. I'm going to create a new purchase order. This is going to be for Hades heat, heat treating. My H key is a problem. All right. We are going to set up our due date of the end of next week for this baby. And we need a FOB. Put that in. Otherwise, we're looking good. We're going to create a new line now once we save our PO and get a number. Now, we need to select subcontract operation for the buy for. When we do that, the job uh, fields become active. This is for 2420. And let's see which operation we want. And notice how only one shows up because it, it's only going to allow you to select uh, those which are subcontract on the particular job. Select that one. We've got 25 pieces. The price was already on the job. Uh, so we have 25 and a quarter each for the heat treating. Uh, we should be good to go. We're going to go ahead and save that. I'll leave it as a single release. Uh, due in on the 12th, next Friday. And now we're going to approve the PO. And let's take a look at what this one looks like for subcon. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to do a drop ship PO to be shipped directly from the vendor. So we see here, uh, th this is our subcon, um, identifying what the job is. Uh, it is a service PO you see here, as opposed to manufacturing. Uh, I mean, a a as opposed to material. And uh, our sequence is 50 for that job. All right. Uh, the last thing about purchase orders I want to demonstrate is a drop shipment where this would ship directly from your vendor uh, to your customer without ever coming to your plant. Uh, this, When you have a drop shipment, it has to be set up uh, on a sales order to, to drop ship. And the supplier needs to be identified there. So uh, you can also set uh, parts to be drop shipped on, uh, as a, by default on the part master on your site parameter, uh, on your site tab. Uh, so we actually have a sales order out here uh, for a dropship part. And that's going to be coming from Globe, is my supplier. And we are going to see what's on the header here. We this is going to be, uh, and it's going to have to take place at the origin where they're shipping it from. We're going to put a due date on here of next Friday as well. And then when we create our line, we're going to identify a sales order here. And our sales order for this particular one is going to be 5391. This is already set up to be drop shipped. And it's on line one. And our part comes in, and we need to put a price. It was not set there for this is the price that we're buying it for. So we're going to say they're 10 bucks. And we're going to save that. Now at the release level is where we can see the drop ship. Notice it's already selected, and you can't uh, deselect it. It is uh, your force to dropship because it's set that way on the sales order to run there. And it says it's going to ship to Bearston, so they're going to know that uh, at your vendor. And when we go back and approve this now, 
and print it. Right. Here we go. And notice how on a drop ship, the ship two gives you a C below and prints the entire uh, the address for your ship two to have on the uh, on the sales order. And there you have it. Now, when a drop shipment is executed and you get a report from your vendor that it's been shipped. That needs to be entered as as the shipment uh, being processed under a material management shipping general ops drop shipment. So it's not your standard uh, you know, where you would receive it back in. Uh, like I said, uh, shipping and receiving gen ops, and then you see drop shipment entry. That's where you're going to put in uh, that it actually uh, has been been received at the client uh, once you have verification of that and you're ready to invoice. All right, well that's all we have for a purchase order and thank you for, for listening to Coda Bears Lunch and Learn.